We're at Chatham House, and this is an exhibition of the photographs of a, a very, very good photographer called Mike Scheel. And he's taken these superb photographs, which tell the story of the First World War from the point of view of the, the soldier at ground level, not so much the general, but the man in the trenches. This first photograph is an aerial photograph he took of the battlefield of Beaumont Hamel, where the Newfoundland Regiment were pretty well destroyed on July the 1st, 1916, in a disastrous attack. What it does show you, though, is the First World War lunar landscape, as we tend to call it. That is, the ground pitted with shell holes of all sorts of denomination of shell, and it also gives you an idea of the, uh, the, the trench system, the way it zigzags to avoid enfilade fire. This was a crater which was blown on July the 1st, 1916, um, by tunnelers, which is a particularly brutal and nasty part of the First World War, in which maybe for several months a, an engineering uh, company of tunnelers would tunnel maybe a, a, a shaft of maybe 300 yards or so, going right underneath the enemy's front line trench, laying maybe 60 pounds of aminal, which was an explosive material, blowing it usually just before the attack. The idea being that that will, A, it will uh, kill a lot of the enemy in the very front line trench, but it will incapacitate or bemuse those who are not actually killed. That's the idea. In fact, it very rarely worked. This, this beautiful, beautiful photograph by Mike Scheel of Tynecott Cemetery outside Ypres on the Passchendaele Ridge. It shows you first and foremost um, the beautiful way that the Commonwealth War Graves Cemeteries, then called the Imperial War Graves Cemetery, were laid out. This has been designed by Sir, Sir Herbert Baker, who was a, a, one of three major architects who did most of the cemeteries on the Western Front. It contains the graves of something in the region of 12,000 men, plus a memorial arch at the back to the missing of the salient from, I think, April 1917 onwards. Towards the end of the war, the Germans increasingly fought not from uh, long static trench lines, but from uh, con concrete posts like this, bunkers, etc. They had fortified positions. It was extremely difficult to dislodge them from, from these positions. Artillery is really going to not have much of an effect, even a huge 300 centimetre howitzer, on something which could be four or f five metres sometimes thick. And this, this photograph perhaps sums up, more than anything else, people's idea of the First World War. The truth of the First World War is that, of course, after the, in 1914, the race to the sea, when each side tried to turn, it, turn the other side's flank, failed. The First World War then descended into the troglodytic world of trenches and static warfare. Because of the static warfare, and because of the fact that uh, particularly around Ypres, and to a certain extent Somme, the water table around Ypres is, is, is such that, and the canals burst their banks, and the rivers burst their banks, the ground became very, very soon churned up with shell fire and, and waterlogged. You can see, if you've got to advance with 60 pounds on your back, it is a big ask. And the, 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 well, I take my hat off to the Tommy who could do that physically, not just get through that, because I've tried to do it without being shot at, and without 60 pounds on my back, and I find it extremely difficult and extremely tiring to do that when you're frightened being shot at with 60 pounds on your back through that sort of swamp is really quite an extraordinary achievement. They're not just doing it in 1914 when they're gung-ho, but they're doing it, doing it in, uh, uh, in 1917, in, in 1918, um, and eventually, of course, in the 100 days following August the 8th, 1918, um, they, they, they win their war the, uh, the British Tommy by his stoicism um, and bravery and in the end skill.